Hello, this is David Wormsley putting myself on the camera for a change, which is quite scary, so I, I might not be doing this a lot. But this is a, a quick question I'm answering that came up on the Beaver Builder Facebook group again today. It's come up a few times and it's not directly Beaver Builder related, but I thought it was worth covering and it's how to style bullet points in list items. So how to color them in this case. And I've set up a few examples here. I've also put them on my own Beaver Builder demo site. So you can come in here, uh, answer the capture here, press demo, give it a little bit of time for it to create a new version of the site. And you can go in and mess around with the CSS. You can even export the template, which is on this page. Under tips and tricks, we've got uh, style bullet points, and that's where it is. Now, I've already done this on another browser, so I've gone straight into the page builder itself and set up my examples. Now, this page is made up of different text modules where in each of them I've added a class selector. So let me just show you that and I've written on it here so you can see what they are. But I'll just open up one and in the advanced tab over here, if we scroll down to the bottom, go into class, I've added there, as you can see, color bullets one. So that's what that one's called and each of these areas have got that. So it's got a, a selector if you like, so it doesn't, the CSS that I've added doesn't affect other areas of the site or other areas on the page. So we're just isolating those. And on this, I'm using different things. So as you probably just see on scrolling there, I'm using character sets or Unicodes and the links here, but I've been taking them here from W3 schools. So all I needed to do was actually copy and paste these into my uh, CSS. So that was a quite easy thing to do. And also down here, I'm using font awesome. So we've got this whole big library over here of something like, what are we at the moment now? 634 icons. Just something to be aware of though on that one. The latest ones depends on what theme you're using. If the theme carries um, font awesome in it by default and that is the case with Beaver Builder. It is the case with Dynamic. If you've turned on under the design settings, uh, you can turn on Font Awesome to show. And it's also the case in Generate Press. So those three themes I know about, they already preload Font Awesome so you can select the fonts. But you just have to make sure that the new ones, uh, uh, you're up to date with it. Some of these may not show, but the rest of them usually will because they're not usually that out of date when they're updating the themes. Okay. So we're going to play some tricks with that. And I'm also going to use something called Nth Child, which allows us to sort of order our um, icons as well like this. We can create some effects. So let's go into the first one and let's go to look at the CSS, which I've added to the page itself. So we need to look under Tools, under Layout CSS forward slash Java. And let's take a look at the first example. So I've marked them all out here. So it should be logical if you're looking around itself. So the first thing that's happening is I've selected the, and as you see, there's the selector, and that's the unordered list over here. And what I needed to do first was to get list style to none, and that removed the bullet that is there by default. And actually that bullet is part of the CSS of your browser, in fact. So we have to remove that from the browser. And I've just taken off the padding and margin and added a little bit of line out, which you can adjust to make some space between each of the list items. But this is where it all happens on this uh, second piece of code here, where I'm using what is called a pseudo element. So what effectively is happening there is where our list item is, which is this, we've already removed the bullet point and I'm putting before a new element where I've already decided what the content is. And that's what it is, content there. And then we put in that Unicode. So I could have selected anyone from, whoops, let's go to the Unicode one. So let's just take another one. Let's have telephones. If I can just get it to select. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste that. Go back over here. If I just backspace, oops. Hopefully, let me just put, that in there okay and paste that in there we are we've got our telephones have have, have appeared now and uh, this is just margin right there which has given us a bit of space between the the icon and the text so i could just increase that a little bit making that uh, 15 there so that's how we do that, and that pretty much covers it. Uh, the, the font size of obviously affects the, the only 
the icon or the Unicode, which I'm using in this case. So let's move on. We're doing exactly the same thing with the next one. I mean, this example two, we don't need to look at. It's just a different Unicode. If we go down to the font awesome ones, as I say, you need to make sure that it's loaded into your theme and is working. Here we've used some ticks and some checks on these two. So let's go down to example three over here. And it's exactly the same CSS as we had before. I might have changed the line height here, but this time I've added to, needed to add font awesome as the font family. And I've needed to add this in over here. And now how we get that, and again, links are here. If we go over to the font awesome library and let's just click on coffee over here. And then when we got there, I'll just show you where you need to grab your piece of code. It's just over here, Unicode over here, and you can see F0F4. I'm going to copy and paste that. And we need to make sure when we're popping it in here that we've got a backslash uh, before it. And if we do that, as you can see, we've just changed it to the uh, coffee cups now. And these are starboard light green, and we could change the size of those. All right, and let's finally just move on to the last thing we can do. We can. This is where this might come in handy if you've got a list where it's uh, checks and crosses. We, we, we might want a different order. Now, what we've done on this here is use this nth child, which allows us to decide uh, which number something's going to be showing. So, let me just get this one up. So, example six over here. It's almost the same up to this point, but I've added two in here. We've got we've got the light green check or tick, and we've got the cross over here in red. And what we've done here is add the nth child on here. Now I've already created a link which will give you a load of recipes on how to sort of use this, but it's quite simple. Where we've got these minus n three here it's adding those first three here. So if I'm to move that, just to show you, to two, as you can see, that's now lost it because it's only showing the, the first two on the list. And this one, which is not the minus, is N4, is going to start at number four. So if I want to do add the cross up there, all I needed to do is to change this to three. And you'll need to play around with this yourself, but really I just wanted to show you what was available and all the tricks you can do. And, you know, clearly there's a lot you can do with this. So I hope that was helpful um, and I'll see you on the next video. Maybe not with video, but uh, I, I will see you very soon. Thanks for listening and talk to you soon. Bye bye.